Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center, and today we're talking about the Faf Expression 7, 710. Now, also, what I'm going to show you today is buttonholes, and it also applies to the Faf Quilt Expression 720, the next step up in this series. But today we're going to do buttonholes on the 710. Now, buttonholes are these wonderful buttonholes that you can do different styles of buttonholes. I'm going to show you how to get into that. This is our menu button right there. And then you go to the, this oval here, and then right here it says buttonholes. Just tap on that. It gives, gives you a variety of buttonholes. Now, the first one is this square-ended buttonhole. It's just real simple. That's the most common type of buttonhole. But as you can see, you also have the kind of buttonholes that you could uh, use for the shank type of buttons, like in jeans and things like that. So a good variety. But we're going to start with that. Now. When you make buttonholes, you have this buttonhole foot here. This plugs into the machine and this little cog here reads how long your uh, buttonhole should be. And I'm gonna show you how, about how to do that. So first of all, we're gonna take the foot off of there, put it in the accessory tray. Then we're gonna put this on here like this. Make sure that this little arrow is towards you, or you can read the where it says 5A, make sure that's right side up and you know you've got it the right way. I'll put this down. I'm gonna press the down button a second time that lifts it up a little bit more, and there, it's right on there. Now, this buttonhole foot does not have a slit anywhere to put your thread through, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. Lift this up, just put a piece of scrap fabric underneath there, put that back down, and then without holding the threads, do needle down and needle up. And then press your foot up, slide your fabric out of there. And you see that one single stitch, grab the thread, the top thread, and it pulled it right through. Okay, so, so to start out, you need to make sure that the, um, the plug that goes on the foot is plugged into the machine. That way, this little cog can be read by the machine and it can tell how long to make your buttonhole. So where is that? That's right underneath here. I find if you don't, aren't really familiar with your machine, it really does help to have like a mirror. You can see there's a little plug-in right there. Another way, a landmark I have is it's right behind the cutter and right before Faf. You go right back there and that's where it is. So I kind of know where it is. I'm gonna just Find this, plug it in, and I think I'm gonna use my mirror. There we go. Now, make sure that that is plugged in all the way up there. If it's loose a little bit, that cog will not work the way it should be. Now, you notice there was a little icon here that, let me see if I can get it to come back on. That one there is for doing manual buttonholes. It's a different foot. That would make it so that you could do the same size of buttonhole over and over again. But once you have this plugged in, that little guy disappears. Let's find that again. I'm gonna use my mirror. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So this is for, this is your length of your buttonhole. Okay, right here. That. Uh, accommodates the size of buttonhole you have. You can change it to longer or shorter. In fact, you could make this really, really long. I'm gonna just go up to the maximum here, 48. That's a really long buttonhole. That's the maximum length you can make. Now, most of the time, you don't make buttonholes that big, but you might if you had a project where you're weaving a ribbon in or something like that. Okay, so I'm, rather than just go back like that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just reselect that buttonhole and puts it back to default. So take your button, take it over here to the lid and measure it right there. That looks to be about 13 millimeters to me, so I'm going to go down to 13 right there. Now the machine is going to make the buttonhole the correct length. Again, make sure that's plugged in well. And then when you make buttonholes, make sure that you use more than just two layers of thin shirt type fabric. It should be either three layers or two layers and some interfacing in there. But I've seen nice dress shirts made with a front placket like that, so it has three layers of fabric. And then you wanna mark this, take your fabric marker and mark the beginning of your buttonhole. Now you don't need to mark the end. You need to mark the center, of course. 
like that, and the beginning of your buttonhole, like that. The ends will be determined by what we have set this up here. Now I'm using the friction pen, lovely pen for uh, writing on fabric. What this does is once you're done, if any of that mark is showing outside of where the button is stitched, all you've got to do is just touch it with your hot iron and that disappears. It actually changes to a pale white. That's how this works. But no matter what marking pen you use, make sure it's designed to work on fabric. So no ballpoint pens or lead pencils. And also, I find it's best to make little marks so that this mark here is going to be covered up by that bar tack at the beginning of the buttonhole. So we're going to put our fabric under here. Now, one thing we want to make sure and do is have this red arrow even with that notch there. So I'm going to push the down button a little bit there so I can move that right to where it goes and make sure that my little mark that I just made is in the center of the, the hole here. Like this, this little knob is going to help us right there. And then the side to side mark, the little short mark that's visible right there. I can also test it by moving my hand wheel down. Looks like it's in the right place. Now, another thing that's important is to make sure that this edge of your garment is parallel with the edge of the foot. It looks to me like it's okay. And then when you start sewing, keep hold of this, the threads. You just need to put your finger on them to keep them taut for the first couple stitches. Now you can use your start stop button, that would be okay, or you can use your foot control. I kind of like the start stop button because it just sews it and there, there you go. So here we go, like this. So yeah, let go of those threads. It marches back to where it needs to go in short stitches and then it does a zigzag coming forward. Goes back, makes a nice bar tack at the back, and then it does its zigzag on the other side coming forward. Then it get, does a good little bar tack at the end and a locking stitch. Now we can also just cut that like that. That's a possibility too. I could have um, set that to cut, but that's all right. All right, and then all we need to do now is trim these threads. You don't need to tie them off. Just trim them right down next to the buttonhole. And you can see my center line right there. That's about where it should be. I could have had it over a little bit more. It doesn't matter a whole lot. Then you take your seam ripper and carefully cut the uh, buttonhole. And at this point, you want to make sure you're using a scrap piece of fabric because if it's a little bit too tight and you've cut it all the way to the ends, then you may want to increase this a little bit. On the other hand, if it's too loose, you can make that a little bit shorter like that. So you can adjust your buttonhole by millimeter and a millimeter is pretty short. So that gives you a good amount to adjust. So that's buttonholes on your Foff Expression 710 and also on your Foff Quilt Expression 720. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have, give us a thumbs up. And if you have comments or questions, you can leave those in the area below. So we have lots of other videos that you can watch here on our Mono Villa YouTube channel on this machine and on other machines. So thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.